Good evening, everyone. I uh, I wanted to do one question tonight, and that one question was Chelsea Smith asked on a Facebook. She said, "What did everyone sell at their first farmers market?" So, um, I think Chelsea was asking, you know, what did everyone sell at their first farmers market this year? But um, you know, what did you sell at your first farmers market ever? You know, when we started, we did farmers markets for gosh, 14, 15 years. Um, right now, we're just doing you know retail from our farm. And some wholesale, but um, when we did farmers markets for years, um, wow, I added it up the other day, and I think we attended over a thousand farmers markets in our in our time there. So we were doing two year round. So we had one in two different cities that was year round, and then we also did one during, just during the winter time, and then we did two just during the summer time. So I've done a lot of farmers markets and learned a lot over the years at those markets. But the first farmers market we went to ever. Um, was our little curb market, and that was just in our little town of 5,000 people. It was in a grocery store, actually, no, not grocery store, convenience store slash gas station slash lottery ticket slash, you know, the local hangout. Um, gravel parking lot, you know, underneath the trees by the fishing hole, and uh, there was about three vendors, I think. And uh, we set up a little four-foot card table. I think the fee that day was $5 the vend. And I think we came home with like 6 to $8 worth of uh, you know sales. We were just selling eggs. And so after that, we started, um, we started growing a few more vegetables, you know, beans and head lettuce and stuff like that. And we had no clue what we were doing. I mean, we brought head lettuce in a five-gallon bucket full of water because we didn't want to, you know, um, wilt on us. So... Um, you know, we've come a long way since then, and, and that first summer, I think we made, you know, a couple thousand dollars over the entire season. Um, you know, never any sales over like $20, $30 a week, I think, at that market. It was just, it was not the right market for what we were trying to do. Um, you know, was, the vendors were older, they'd been there a while, and uh, they weren't, it wasn't focused on making a profit to run a business. They were all, you know, retirees. Um, and they were just doing this in the retired time. So, um, you know, after that, we looked at and we decided, hey, we're going to actually find a, a real farmer's market, something a little bit bigger. And we were accepted into one of the other local farmer's market in Glens Falls, which was a, a city of probably, you know, 30,000 or so. Um, and that was actually a really good market. It had been there for about 20, 25 years, had an actual covered pavilion over it so that it um, – it was in the shade, and you didn't have to. You could just pull your truck up, and um, and just and just work out of your truck. You didn't have to set up a canopy or anything. So um, that market, you know, the first week, I think we almost made a hundred dollars, which was you know more than we had made the whole year at any, even our best market. So we were super jazzed. And also at that market, we're really good growers, so they were able to teach us the tips tricks of the trade and train us on what we were doing. And so that year, so the second year we were farming, one week during the summer, we broke $1,000 in sales at that farmer's market. And it was that day that I was like, you know what? We can do this. We can make a business out of this. We can we can, we can can farm like this. And that, it, I was 15 at the time. So um, anyway, yeah, that was a, a big deal for us. You know, we broke $1,000. Um, and that I think that year total in our farmer's market sales I've actually got the paperwork here. This was year 2004. Um, this was the <laughs> finances for that year on our farm. It's all done on just paper. My dad did it for us. Um, I think we lost money that year. Well, you always do your first couple of years. Um, but I mean, we still really had no idea what we were doing. Um, you know, we were doing a lot of animals still, and we hadn't figured out what our profit centers were. And I was still, you know, hatching, um, hatching chickens on the farm and stuff like that. We were, you know, doing goats and, and different stuff like that. Um, but that year, we'd already put up our second greenhouse because we were seeing how profitable that those were for us. Um, so that next year, that would have been 2005 we got accepted to the Saratoga Farmer's Market. And that was a city of 50, 55,000 people. Um, you know, a, a college town had the track in it during the summer. Um, there's a, a famous race run there at the end of August. Um, and uh, a, 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 just a real, you know, some real money there. And so that actually became, we were accepted in there in 2005, and that became a flagship market for us. And 
some weeks we pull you know three four thousand dollars a week um, from just the Saturday market there um, so how do we get in there because you know obviously the curb markets the one they'll just let you in because the five dollar day fee and you know they just want more vendors but the Saratoga market there was 25 to 30 vegetable growers there alone um, so you know we studied this we did a, there was a strategy that we took to actually get <clears throat> accepted to that market and the strategy was that we we went there the year before several times and we studied the vendors we studied what they had what they didn't have we'd studied you know different aspects of the market and we really made us the pitch um, the pitch to the board um, and you know a lot of places they just have a regular application you put out well obviously we filled that out but then we went a step and above and beyond we actually sent pictures of our displays we sent pictures of our product we sent a cover letter saying hey look we're looking for we don't care what stall we get you can put us at the end of the lawn you know just give us anything we just want to be able to vend and the other thing we did was we were intentional about picking products and saying and putting them on our our application that no one had. So that first year, I think we did things like microgreens. We did things like um, uh, wheatgrass and catgrass. Um, we picked a few vegetable crops that no one else had. No one was growing there, like you know, things like okra and sweet potatoes. Um, even though we knew on millennia of those crops, some of those crops were very profitable, but some of those crops we knew we were going to lose money on. But for us, we knew that market was going to be, you know, an incredible revenue source from us. So we were willing to lose money on some of those crops because we knew that the rest of the crops we were selling would be more than make up for that that income. And you know, after a couple of years at that market, we'd establish ourselves, and they said, "Yeah, you guys are a great vendor. We definitely want you here." We were able to drop some of those crops because they weren't making sense for us any longer. So. Um, yeah, that was our strategy. Another strategy we used to really, you know, move ourselves in that market because um, at that market there's, you know, several buildings, so pavilions, and then there's also the lawn. And so if you're, you know, a lower ranked vendor, you're out in the lawn. But if you are, you know, really good on time, you follow the rules, you're on the board, you can get primo spots. And you know, a lot of people at that market would say, um, you know, it's rule fair and anything happens, you know, according to the rules and regulations. No. Um, you know, farmers markets are incredibly run by politics. Every single farmers market board I've been a part of and heard of, there has been politics in there. And there's, that's nothing different about the Saratoga board. Um, so, yeah, there was definitely politics, you know, who got in, who didn't. Um, you know, we um, we were on the board and we, you definitely got preferential treatment if you were on the board there. Um, and I know that, you know, from other markets and talking to other people, that's what happens too. So, you know, if you're trying to move up in the market, Jump on the board. Usually, they're more than happy to find um, board members. Um, there was a new grower at the market, and uh, they got in the one of the Wednesday markets. You know, it's not as a really good market, but he said, "Yeah, we'd like to be here Saturday." And I was like, "Well, you know, if you want to be here Saturday, join the board, be the treasurer." And he did that, and the next year they got in. So, um, you know, I think people are looking to reward those who uh, put the work in and actually do the do the work, but. Again, I'm not saying it's fair. I'm just saying that's the way I've seen the system work. Um, so, you know, obviously, we've got a lot of stories from, you know, we're doing over a thousand farmers markets over the years. Um, I think the, the best one we've got is where um, we were, I was at a Wednesday market, and uh, it was a mom, you know, one of those crunchy mamas, and no judgment because we're definitely crunchy parents and we definitely don't, you know, follow the rules and regs. Um, but this mom had their kid, um, probably like oh, two years old or so, um, just carrying her around, and the kid had no pants on, so no diaper, no nothing. And uh, mother was there selecting produce. Kid was facing our table, actually kind of facing inside of her. And, and the next thing we know, the kid's uh, a boy, kid spraying, spraying the customer's next customer over his leg, um, <laughs> just just peeing. And uh, the mom looks down and says, oh, I'm sorry, but you know it's sterile, so it's safe. You're okay. Well, I think we lost that customer sale. Um, uh, thankfully, it didn't pee on the table, didn't pee on the produce, but um, you know, that's the other thing. <laughs> and you have dogs that come to the farmer's market, and some farmer's markets have banned them. But at our farmer's market, it was you know a leash-only policy. But still, you know, there'd be dog fights. There would be dogs peeing on the posts. Um, we had to make sure we never put our produce under 18 inches off the ground or else you risk getting it peed on as well, um, which isn't great either. Um, the dogs would definitely pee on the plant people's, you know, planters and stuff. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I definitely, if you are starting a farmer's market on a board, banning dogs, while it may not be popular, um, makes for a much safer market. Um, you know, I would hate to get a kid bitten at the farmer's market. Um, 
yeah, that would be rough. Um, and I've definitely heard of that happening too. So something you definitely want to watch. Um, but other stories, you know, we that uh, that um, farmers market was built in an area of the city that they didn't really like. Um, so it was kind of you know the drainage was bad. And what had happened is downstream of the farmers market, the drainage was too small. And so then upstream, and so what happened is that this particular market we were at, it rained like all night the night before. So when we got to our farmer's market that morning, there was about an inch of water in our stall, um, you know, because there was actually a drain right in our, our stall. And so we were like, okay, well, you know, it'll probably go down. Well, we set up, we started working at it, and actually what happened during the market, because of all that water that was up in this area of the city, was now trying to get down to go out this area, it started backflowing up through the drain. And so by the end of the market, middle of the market, we had three to six inches of water all through our stall, um, which was really hard to sell. And, um, you know, we obviously had to rearrange the stall and move the product and stuff like that because, you know, obviously this is sewer water, so it's not necessary, it's not septic, you know, not, um, you know, uh, it's not like, you know, sewage, but it's definitely, you know, flushing all the streets and stuff. So nothing you'd want your produce or yourself to be standing in. Um, so, yeah, that was uh, that was another experience. And, you know, obviously with that many markets, we've had our fair share of summer rainstorms and hailstorms and, you know, thunder and lightning at the farmer's market, too. Um, and then there was that time I locked my key. I lost my key on a delivery. Um, an hour away. So what we would do, because we were trying to always stack our farmers markets, so we were trying to put the most amount of product on that truck and deliver it in one trip. Um, so it's called like stacking enterprises, stacking you know delivery, and, and basically cuts the cost of every one of those deliveries down much better. So what we would do is we would truck would be loaded, leave the farm, hit the farmers market. At that farmers market, the market crew would meet the truck there. Everything would be unloaded for that market. Then the truck would go on its wholesale route. And so we would then go to the local food co-ops, um, you know, hit the restaurants and all that stuff. And then by the time the market ended, the truck would be back at the farmer's market, load everything up, and leave. Well, I was at the furthest stop, of course, and uh, I dropped my key for the truck. Um, it's one of those things that you should always have a spare key on your truck hidden somewhere. Um, you should never take the key out of the ignition because... Well, most of the places we, we were delivering, there was really no one going to steal it. But what I ended up happening is I dropped it in a case of spaghetti squash and left it in the co-op. And uh, I didn't really check the case. I checked the cases when I lost it and couldn't find it. So I had to have a called locksmith, had a locksmith come and make a new key. Um, ended up getting back to the market like three hours late. Um, but it was uh, it was definitely a an experience. And... Um, not something I definitely want to repeat in the future, but um, yeah, that was fun. And then um, let's see, the I've definitely lost money at farmers markets. You know, that whole first year at that curb market, some weeks we would definitely have to spend more in fees than we would for the farmers market. Um, and the other thing, you know, we always experience is with people at farmers markets would be, you know, people always complain about the competition that, oh gosh, you have so many vendors and stuff. We were fighting at that market, not fighting. I mean, we obviously worked with them, but there was 55 or so vendors at that big one and about 25 to 30 vegetable growers. Um, and so that means we really had to differentiate ourselves. And um, our, our strategy at that market was A, we had the most beautiful product. I mean, we made sure that every beet bunch was beautiful. Every single turnip bunch was, you know, white and clean. Our radishes, you know, were sparkling. And that was one of the things we always focused on was color. And so we would focus on building corners into our farmer's market stall of color. So on the front corner, we would always have a mound of radishes. And we plant radishes every single week during the summer. So we got 30 different plantings and so that we could just keep that mound of radishes um, and so that would draw people in from halfway across the farmer's market seeing that mound of radishes. Um, we'd also grow sunflowers just for the color, you know, just a couple bouquets of beautiful sunflowers in our stall. Even if we didn't sell them, that brought people in. Um, and then we always tried to make it as convenient for the customer as possible, too. So um, I wanted to throw up a few pictures of some of our later farmer's markets, um, and hopefully you guys can see them here. Obviously, this is some of the fun stuff we do with the squash. Um, again, tried a little variety. It didn't cost us any more money to grow these, um, all these different colors of squash. Um, 
and squash blossoms again something that you can really only sell at farmers markets um, you can see here the the piles of product here using baskets using some layering too so going up top coming down below so try to make a wall of produce for our consumers there um, you know things like fun things like nasturtiums I mean we would just throw a few baskets of those out um, you can see the tablecloths we used um, used some um, have some herbs and little jars there cat grass um, you can see different color of the, the pickling cubes. So we loved, that was one of my favorite pickling cubes is the uh, salt and pepper from Johnny. It's just really sweet, incredible flavor, pr relatively productive. Um, you can see the strawberries there. Let's see if I can get another picture. There's in the front, you can see. Um, so again, yeah, that pile of radishes there. You can see that beautiful pile of radishes. See the product in the back, the obviously different kinds of, you know, rutabagas. Um, far end you've got some kohlrabis there some purple guys and then creating like that that that's table in front too for us was a huge kind of if you wanted to feature a product you really trying to move a product you just put it out there pile it out there it was kind of in more of the flow of people and they would see that better the other thing we did is we had that great big banner too so you know talked about what we were um you know so that time this was probably 2014 2013 um, this is before we were certified organic so you know this was you know certified naturally grown um, just a great big picture of who we were our branding um, and then you can see the tents behind it too so eventually we actually went to one big canopy that covered our entire stall and just allowed people to move in and out of there um, and uh, that really allowed people to um, just to, to shop very easily uh, one of the pr principles of retail they say is you don't want people to brush butts um, is that um, you know that if that if that happens they usually are turned off and it not may not happen that week they may buy that week they may not think nothing about it but mentally it's a trigger it puts a negative connotation with that um, with that situation and, and that stall um, and that's actually when the let's see I think it's in why we buy Same guy that wrote this one, um, Paco Underhill, um, and Paco is the guy that did a lot of retail psychology. So this is his third book. It's What Women Want. It's really good. It's all about the woman consumer. But he wrote two other ones, and it's Why We Buy and Call of the Mall. And so we talked a little bit about the mall and why that made sense at that point in history. So um, excellent books. I highly recommend them if you're really into and you really want to think about your retail psychology, really retail um, philosophy, you know, how farmers markets work and that sort of stuff. But, um, yeah, I hope that was uh, helpful. Kind of felt I rambled a little long, but, um, definitely I loved farmers markets. We really enjoyed them. We did a lot, um, you know, a lot of cool things with our farmers markets. Um, we got good at it. I mean, because we did so many, we did four a week. We really had it down to, you know, how the truck left with SOPs and, you know, just the trucks laid out perfect with, you know, the wholesale always goes in this corner. It's labeled X and then you have your retail in this area. Um, so, yeah, that's kind of, uh, this is just my Google uh, photo and I just typed in farmer's market there at the top. That's the cool thing about Google Photos. It will actually auto tag photos for you. So I just typed in farmer's market and went out and found these photos in my entire library that to it looked like farmer's market photos. Um, so I can't guarantee everything will be kosher here. But yeah, this is a cool thing we did. Um, so we just got, we made these little labels um, because we had so many different types of greens in the same type of bags. So we just made these little tiny, you know, two inch labels or something and had the name of the product in there. That it had obviously this is when we went certified organic had our certificate on there and then our website is stuff so they could always track it back if they had a question I'm not super proud that arugula in there it's got a couple of holes in it um, but yeah oh cool this is cool recipe card holders so we would do a ton of recipe cards at the farmers market um, and uh, we had a super we had a graphic designer that worked with us and did some really cool stuff. Um, and then we just put them out there and allowed people to pick them and it really would help sales of things um, that were not that we're not selling so just allow us to you know be able to push those um, maybe, you know double your sales of kohlrabi if you had a recipe on it um, if you're sampling it you could triple your sales of kohlrabi kohlrabi is not an easy seller so um, 
All right. Well, it is almost 930. I want to go up with my wife and I think we're going to watch a movie and eat some ice cream today. Tomorrow's Mother's Day. So all you guys out there, go out and treat your girls right and um, have a great evening. Mm -hmm.